Hey, what's going on guys? Mortgage Mike here again. And I wanna talk to you about a question that I've been getting a lot lately from a lot of young guys. Had another uh, young guy just got out of the army, a veteran. Shout out to my veterans, by the way. You guys already know how I feel about you. Um, and they're asking questions about how they can get into real estate. And I love that you're asking these questions, guys. Uh, but the approach that almost all of them uh, approach me with in terms of how they want to get in real estate is from an investment standpoint. And you have it a little backwards. Like I said, I love that you're asking these questions, but a lot of these guys are young guys, 23, 24, 25, under 30. Yeah, you can get into the investment side of it, but what I always tell folks who are new to real estate or you're trying to get into real estate is own where you live, all right? That's the first step. So I'm gonna give you a two-step approach on how you should get into real estate. I'm not gonna give you three or five or 10, just two steps on what you need to do, your first two steps that you should take to get into real estate. I don't wanna confuse you. I just want you to do these first two steps. So step number one, own where you live. Your main property, your residential property, where you're gonna live, own it. Don't rent and then go out there and expect to, uh, to, to purchase some investment property or rental property while you're still renting and you don't own where you live. That's the first thing I tell a lot of these guys and I emphasize that because I know that there's a narrative out there that says the opposite, right? And I'm not gonna call any names, you know who I'm talking about, right? There's a guy out there or a few guys out there who are telling you uh, that you should go out there and purchase investment or rental property and, and don't own where you live and don't invest in your own home, right? And that's counterintuitive. That should sound like nonsense to you, right? Because you need to own where you live so you can build equity. I'm making a quick stop at the ATM here, guys, but I'm gonna keep going. So just to touch on what I was talking about before, um, the guy who's pushing this narrative that somehow you shouldn't own the home that you live in, he owns a ton of rental property, he owns buildings, he's based here in South Florida actually, and he owns a lot of these properties uh, that rent to uh, low income, middle income folks, and it is part of his agenda to keep you guys renting and not own homes. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, some of these people are pushing that narrative. That's number one. And number two, while you're building equity in the first home that you purchased, that's how you're gonna get to step number two, right? Which is to take equity out of the first home and use it to purchase your second property, which will be your investment or rental property. Now, how do you, that, those are the first, those are the two steps, by the way. That's the easy two-step plan to go from uh, a renter to a homeowner to uh, someone who owns two properties, right? The second one being your investment or rental property. Now. Let's rewind a little bit and talk about what you're gonna need to do to accomplish step number one. Because I think this step gets overlooked a lot. A lot of people look at credit, uh, which is important, um, and down payment, right? Which is also important, right? Not as important, however, as income. Right, your income is supremely important in this whole equation, right? Because listen, as a mortgage broker, there are a lot of DPAs, down payment assistance programs out there that I can help you with. Programs that honestly, if you have the credit and the income, you can purchase your uh, residential property, the property that you're gonna live in, with almost no money out of pocket, almost no money out of pocket, right? Um, down payment assistance programs, some of them will give you up to three and a half percent towards the purchase of your home. And then all you need to cover is closing costs. And in a lot of instances, I can help you find uh, a property where the seller 
is flexible. The seller is willing to give you cash back towards your closing costs. So that takes care of the down payment part of it. Now, the reason I wanna emphasize income, cash flow is extremely important. I emphasize that because no bank will give you a loan, whether it be for your primary residence or for an investment property, if you cannot show them that you have the ability to repay the mortgage. However you show that income, whether it's through a job, whether it's through a business, your income is the most important factor in the equation. Keep working, keep hustling, keep stacking your money, so you can show not only reserves, but you can also show that you have consistent income coming in for at least the last two years. Now, once you have the problem solved of you know having good credit, having consistent income from your job or from your business, whatever it may be, now we just need to find the property. And don't get hung up on the property, guys. Like for your first property, I tell people, you don't need to love the property. You don't have to love the property. All you need to do is own a piece of real estate, right? This is your stepping stone. This is the first property that you're gonna use to get to step number two and own that investment property. So just buy something, right? Whatever you qualify for. Let's say you make 40 grand a year or 50 grand a year, right? And you'll qualify for a $250,000 mortgage. Look for a condo that'll take an FHA loan, right? Look for a little townhouse, maybe for 300,000, right? That you can get into. Just own something, right? Just buy something because this is, remember, you're climbing a ladder, right? And this is the first step on that ladder. So you just wanna, you just wanna get into something. You wanna own something, right? So that's step number one. And here's, here's the magic. Here's where the magic starts to happen. Once you own that property, right? In two or three years, let's use a $300,000 property for, as an example. In two or three years, that property is gonna have 20% equity. What's 20% of 300,000? That's $60,000 of equity, right? Just by you making your payments, just by the appreciation factor, right? You're gonna have equity in that property and that equity is what you're gonna use to then parlay into an investment property, another rental property, and then you rinse and repeat, right? So that is the two-step plan of how you get into real estate. If you take nothing else away from this video, remember this, own where you live. Don't try to do it backwards and try to buy investment property first. The first thing you wanna set is your foundation, where you're not worrying about where you live, you're not worrying about your rent going up, you're not worried about a landlord saying, hey, I just sold this building or I just sold this house and I'm sorry, I'm gonna to have to kick you out or I can't renew your lease, now you're scrambling to go find somewhere else to live. No, you want the peace of mind to know that where you live belongs to you. You don't have to worry about it. And you can then have the peace of mind to go out and search for that second property. All right, guys, I'm done talking. Like, share, and subscribe.